Hi everyone, good morning, this is Dan. Welcome to Engelgeist. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. I do greatly appreciate them. This is the weekly forecast. It is a broad spectrum reading. It is intended for all signs, so I do speak in broad terms. You need to figure out if and where it fits in your life, if at all. Um, if it doesn't fit, that's okay. If it's, you know, not working with your situation, doesn't mean anything's broken or wrong. You just might be working on something different during this time. Um, it's originally created for the week of the 14th through the 20th. So um, each card will represent for a day of May. And it's uh, each card will represent for like maybe a day or two, maybe three for the week. Um, some of you may experience all of these cards and then some. Some of you may experience only one of these cards throughout the entirety of the week. It's kind of like a... Um, take what you need and leave the rest reading. But it gives us insight into kind of what's going on in the co collective energy that we can tap into or can be made aware of to avoid. We just sort of use it in that way. And then as I go out throughout the week, I build upon this energy uh, daily. Um, for those of you that are new, please check out the drop down menu underneath any of my videos. In there is some housekeeping rules, just things I want you to think about when utilizing the channel. What decks I'm using uh, during the current reading, and then um, uh, how to follow me on social media. If you want a private reading, you would need to contact me either via my Instagram or my Facebook business page. Please be aware that I will not um, solic solicit you for a reading. You would have to initiate that conversation by reaching out to me. If anybody were to ever reach out to you to try and sell you a reading, it's more than likely not me, so just be aware of that. Um, and then there's easy ways to support the channel, which are really kind of important. If you're watching my content and you enjoy it, please hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Um, hit that notification bell because I do do daily content. It will notify you when a new video goes up. And then uh, share the video out. Leave me a question or comment on the video. And I greatly appreciate all of that stuff. So let's get into these cards and see what's going on with the Sunday reading for the week of the 14th through the 20th. It looks like we have a new moon in Taurus coming up this week. Well, that will be nice. New moons in Taurus are really mm, kind of sexy and gentle all at the same time. I'm into it. Like turning it over in Taurus energy. Nice, slow, steady pace. So let's see what's going on with these cards. What does Spirit want us to know? All right, so starting out the week, we have the Fool. We saw him just two days ago. Fool is new beginnings, major arcana energy, optimism. Sometimes, you know, he can be looked at as not thinking things through. You know, sometimes I think he's not the popular opinion card. Let's just say that. He's the beginning of the major arcana, so he is big energy. He represents new opportunity this week, especially at the beginning of the week, where we might be looking at new adventures, new possibilities, new choices we need to make. These are decisions that I feel like we need to make on our own. Um, other people may not understand our thinking, our decision making. They may even see us as foolish. But the thing with the fool is that he has a certain amount of faith, a certain amount of, yeah, some could say stupid, <laughs> stupidity, but he's not. He's willing to take the risk. He's willing to put his faith in himself, the universe, uh, the, the path that he's about to set, embark upon, and um, allow for the adventure, the transformation, the learning experience, the opportunity, because that's something too that comes with the fool, is that even though he's called the fool, he's uh, open to learning. He can be taught, and he goes through the cycle of the major arcana learning his way and experiencing all of the different cards. I always notice on this particular design, these two butterflies, which, you know, signify transformation. There's an opportunity here to maybe switch paths or make different choices or look at things from a fresh perspective that give us a little bit of joy, a little bit of freedom, a little bit of excitement. And when we do that, we open the door for new beginnings. And so be prepared for that. Be on the lookout for that. That's what the cards are trying to tell us is that there could be new doors or um, situations opening up to us within our relationships, within our work, where within our day-to-day -day life that present room for growth and room for change and room for movement. And so, you know, and also I'm going to say this with the new moon this week, that, you know, it's highly possible that 
new moons are about beginnings and building, um, creation, right? And with Taurian energy, Taurus is about being grounded and, you know, sometimes workaholic, but they're dedicated. So this is a nice um, card to see going into this week with the new moon in Taurus because any opportunities we do see on the horizon that we begin to move towards, we might actually be able to put into effect in a practical way. So let's look at the midweek. We have the Knight of Cups. So we have, this is water, um, obviously, oftentimes associated with Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces. Um, the Knight of Cups can be a very romantic card. I think that this is definitely us honoring our feelings in the middle of the week. If there's a shift or a change through the Fool that we are experiencing, a choice that maybe needs to be made, or decisions or steps that we're taking towards something new, the Knight of Cups asks us to clock in with our feelings, check in and decide, is this how I feel? And then to move bravely forward in compassion and love, right? Um, and in service or loyalty to ourselves, to our emotions, to the emotions of a situation. Uh, it isn't a, like, to me, it's an emotionally intelligent card, sometimes even more emotionally intelligent than, say, the King of Cups, because the Knight is so much about service and compassion, in my opinion. So the King can sometimes be, you know, about being a ruler and being right, where the Knight is about doing the right thing. Um, I think that this is about us moving towards what we feel right about and being true in that, um, and... Uh, holding that truth, especially through the, th through the midweek, uh, as we move forward. And let's look at the end of the week card. We have, what is this? I, oh, Nine of Pentacles. I couldn't see the Pentacles on the fence. <laughs> All right, so Nine of Pentacles. I'm not mad at this because, at towards, like I said, that new moon in Taurus is at the end of the week. Pentacles is Earth energy. Taurus is an Earth sign. And Nine of Pentacles is about independence, right? It's oftentimes this woman depicted in a field, here we have her in roses, but she's safe, she's secure, she's behind her fence, she has everything that she needs. We're moving towards what we want, what we desire, what would make us happy, what would make us maybe more financially or uh, secure or stable in our lives. We're making the decision ourselves, is my feeling this week, especially with the Fool and the Knight of Cups. We're making the decision by how we feel and what excites us the most, even if others don't understand it. Others not understanding it is not important to us, is my feeling. We're like, screw it, I'm doing me. And I'm okay with that. The Knight of uh, Pentacles, uh, sorry, the Nine of Pentacles is definitely a card of independence, right? So making independent decisions this week, whether no matter how unpopular they may be, we're going to be doing so from a place of heart and feeling and emotion and excitement and maybe even some joy, right? They may not be understood by many, but it doesn't matter. It's understood by us. Expect the end of the week to find ourselves more grounded in what it is we're working towards, feeling more secure, more set, stable, more discerning, more, gr uh, more grounded and like, um, aware of the um, attributes, gifts, skills, um, even assets or resources that we have around us to create what it is that we want. There is a feeling of like contentment with the nines. Um, there's a feeling of uh, uh, nines indica indicate in tarot the personal ending of a situation or the personal um, resolution of something, right? And so I think that towards the end of this week, we feel probably pretty self-satisfied self satisfied in where we're at or the decisions that we've made and we've settled them or we've committed to them in such a way that we're ready to uh, move forward into next week, uh, like physically creating them. Does that make sense? And moving towards them. Let's look at the Untamed Elemental. It, it, ooh, interesting. This has got to be um, ether, I'm imagining. Tree of Life. This to me, right out of the gate, I love the green healing color of it. The green represents the heart chakra and healing. The yellow to me always re represent, represents the mind or the intellect, right? I feel like this is our mind like aligning with the healing of whatever it is that we're feeling this week, the choices that we're making this week, and growing that forward. The tree of life, is a, to me, feels about, obviously because it's a tree, it's about growth and strength, um, grounding in 
who we are, what we know to be true, and then allowing that to kind of heal ourselves, our life, the path we're on, all of that sort of thing. Let me read the Tree of Life. I'm wondering if this is either Earth or Ether. I have a feeling it's Ether. I'm going to check Ether first. Just, oh, there's wild cards in here too? Shut up. I didn't even know that. Let me see if, is this? No, it's not. It must be Earth then. Where are my Earth guys? Give me one second. That's all water. Oh yeah, this must be Tree of Life. Here we go. Self-correct. We may be shifting positions, guys, with that fool in the beginning. And and, I, and like what I said earlier, before I even read this chapter, you know, the Knight of Cups is about checking in with our emotions and being loyal to how we feel around a situation and being true and compassionate to ourselves first and foremost, and then those involved. The Nine of Pentacles is about that self-correct or understanding what we need above all else and living in that independence and that choice, um, grounding in that and standing strong and true in it. All right, holding the essential balance between earth and sky, tree of life forms a singular ever-growing veracity of interconnectedness. He is blessed by the multitude of nutrients drawn through his roots and provides a strong and generous shelter of truth and perspective for all who seek refuge with him. I think that truth and perspective is in the night. We're going to feel it most in the Knight of cups first emotionally and then really understand it by the end of the week in the Knight of pentacles. He breathes and stands tall, offering a canopy of consciousness so that his essentia will be reborn for all eternity. Tree of Life offers the blessing of his supportive system so that any imbalance in your life may self-correct. The answers you seek are within you because you are the channel through which higher intelligence experiences itself. You are an emanation of your spirit's signature passed through a template of sacred geometry, the result of which is a rare atomic form. All that you desire to experience is available now. The liberation you strive for is already here. That liberation is the fool card, guys. Spend time connecting with Tree of Life in your daily meditation, and every aspect of your world will, be will begin to come into greater alignment with your own internal truths. This is definitely about listen listening to ourselves this week emotionally and with that independence of the Nine of Pentacles and then like living by it. The balanced version is feeling supported by and connected to all life. The imbalanced version is the perception of having to do it alone. Uh, to bring it into balance, rest in the awareness that you are perfectly supported to live your life. Now that support is in the um, pretty much all of these cards, uh, but this the, the imbalance is that fear of doing it alone. You know, the independence of the Nine of Pentacles can sometimes feel scary, right? Because when we have to do it alone or we make the decisions or we're standing in our own independence, we're the one responsible for, <laughs> for the way we're going. But there's a strength in that, right? There's a, there's growth in that. There's interconnectedness in that, just like Tree of Life says. We interconnect ourselves through connecting within how we feel emotionally and making those choices and then standing firm and tall in those choices as we finish out the week. Let's look at the clarifiers. First, we have the lovers. Interesting. Gemini energy, also major arcana. The three of swords. Wow. And the Magician. So that's the next card after the Fool. We have the Magician is all about having all of the assets to create what it is that we need in front of him. Um, not only like first spiritually because he is the Magician, but then we kind of make manifest in the 3D world. For some of you, this is about a choice or a move away from maybe a relationship and deciding to go independent and go singular. Trusting your emotions, you can still have compassion and feeling in the Knight of Cups for the situation or relationship, but you can also step away from it and be independent and honor yourself and your own truths. That's sort of the lover's card. The lover's card always represents a choice. And that choice could be as early on as the fool in choosing a new direction, whether it's around a situation we thought we once loved, that can be a job or a relationship or something in our life. But moving away from the heartache of the Three of Swords, right? The Three of Swords indicates having learned something through pain, betrayal, sadness, right? I don't think because it's bookended by the lovers and the magician that this pain or this heartache is overwhelming at all. I get a feeling that it's actually working to our benefit. 
uh, because it's indicating by these two powerful major arcana cards that are like, you know, love and creation. It's indicating to us through our past experiences of pain, sadness, loss. By knowing what we don't want, we understand better what we do want, if that makes sense. And I feel like this is a week of looking at what is it that we do want and then moving, honoring that and moving towards that no matter what others say. I hope that makes sense. It's, it does to me. Let's go to the graphic stone. The lot of... Um, I'm just going to say there's like, out of all these cards, there's a fair amount of major arcana mixed in here. So this should be a really significant week in us being true to ourselves uh, and our own heart, right? It's funny, too, because this angel is here. And last week's grounding stone was angel. And so the angels are still around us, like protecting us, looking over this choice, um... Uh, honoring this choice that we might be making, even if this choice might feel risky or... Uh, it's it's not that it feels risky. What it is, is it's like with the Knight of Cups there and the Knight of Pentacles, it's like we're honoring ourselves first and foremost, and that might feel foreign to us. That might worry us. That might... We might get some kickback or some flack or some... That's where that Three of Swords might stir up within us. Like, oh my God, putting myself first, is that the right thing to do? Well, you know what? Indeed it is, because the magician is card number one of the major arcana, which means, yeah, I get to go first. I'm number one. The fool is zero, right? So we have to start at zero, make that decision, and move towards that position. Um, and go towards what we love. Make a choice to go towards the thing that brings us joy, peace, happiness, but also honors ourselves emotionally and physically and allows us to grow and to heal through the tree of life. Here is the grounding stone throughout this week. It's on Snowflake Obsidian, which is a balance of light and dark, white and black, both polarities. Um, grounding in our energy this week is going to be key, being aware of our energy. What are we feeling? That's the Knight of Cups. Uh, how are, what actions are we taking? That is the Nine of Pentacles. Uh, this is about, you know, being aware, are we creating from a place of fear or are we creating from a place of compassion and love? That's the energy that we need to be in. When we're in this place of compassion and love, our manifestations, our creations are far more powerful with the magician and the lover's presence here. We can still honor our thoughts, our fears, our worries, our past, our pains, but we don't have to let them, like, um, guide us or be a defining factor in our decisions and the steps that we take. We can allow them to almost, um, what's the word, like, not indicate, but they can, I don't want to say influence either, but I, I feel like this Three of Swords is here to make us smarter. Um but not to overwhelm us. Does that make sense? So we don't want to get, I don't think we will get stuck in it with the lovers and the magician on either side of this, but it's about going like, yeah, I went through that for a reason and that reason put me here. And now I'm ready to create something different or move towards something different. And I'm going to do that from a place of love, feeling connected, whether others understand it or not. And, and that's my choice, right? And so that's where I feel like grounding in that energy and being aware of the energy that we're creating on, focusing on. We don't want to be creating on anxiety, fear, or worry. Um, we want to let possibility reign supreme, opportunity reign supreme, um, believe in ourselves, and let that be our energy this week. It'll be interesting to see how the cards play out. That's your reading. I hope you liked it. Please hit that thumbs up button if you did. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Leave me a question or comment. Um, understand that whatever we're putting into effect this week is, is growing into something that will, may bring us actually more life and protection and wonder. Um, and I'll tune in tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.